Hi everyone and welcome to the press conference following the meeting of the Culture and Sports Council. I will first give the floor to Minister of Science and Culture, Ms. Hanna Kosonen, who chaired the meeting, followed by Commissioner for Education, Culture, Youth and Sport, Mr. Tibor Navracic. The floor will then be open for questions. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you that we have interpretation in this room. You can speak and listen to English, French, German, Dutch, Italian, Spanish, Finnish and Swedish. Uh, without any further ado, Minister Kosonen, please go ahead. You have the floor. Good afternoon, dear media representatives and Commissioner Navracis. Thank you for joining this press conference. We, we have had today very interesting council sessions, first with the culture ministers and then with sport ministers. Tomorrow we will continue with the youth sector. I would highlight the importance of the sectors. Our presidency the team has been Sustainable Europe, Sustainable Future. Accordingly, culture, sports and youth sectors bring Europe closer to its citizens. This is important as we prepare for global challenges such as climate change. And uh, secondly, sustainable growth is strongly highlighted in the strategic agenda 2019-2024. Set by the European Council, as is also investing in culture and our cultural heritage. Youth, sports, and culture sectors play an important role in this. Uh, thirdly, uh, dig digitalization and artificial intelligence are changing the way we do things. Creative industries are spearheading digitalization and AI, meaning the growth potential is immense. Our youth represent a new digital generation. They are drivers of change. This needs to be understood. The aim in this council today and tomorrow is to underline this and bring forward the priorities set in the strategic agenda. This is reflected both in the set of resolutions and conclusions adopted today or to be adopted tomorrow, but also in the debates we have had and will have. Thus, as you have seen in the Council agenda, the topics of these two days include, firstly, in culture, creative and audiovisual sectors, promoting sustainable development and the competitiveness in the, the sector, in sports, fight against corruption, safeguarding children in sports and good governance. In youth sector, digital youth work, education of youth workers and the potential of youth work in climate change. I would argue all these to be very topical at the moment. And in the meeting, we adopted anonymously a resolution on the cultural dimension of sustainable de development. I believe this is a good step towards integrating culture into the 2030 agenda. This is what we ask the Commission to do. We should be active in all policy fields when aiming at the UN Sustainable Development Goals, CDGs. Secondly, we had a very good debate on how Europe can compete better in the cultural, creative and audiovisual sectors and in a sustainable way. We have an extremely rich audiovisual scene in Europe, but its full potential has not been fully recognized. These sectors account already over 7% of the EU's workforce and over 5% of the GDP, bringing clear added value. I think the message was pretty clear. Europe needs a more systematic and strategic approach in strengthening the European cultural and creative sectors. 
Relevant issues include new technologies, cross-sector innovation, our position on the global market, efficient promotion of European workers, quality content and audience building and diversity. And in the afternoon, we anonymously adopted conclusions on fight against corruption and safeguarding children in sport. Professional sport is a growing industry. Corruption threatens both the business and the values of sport. Also, the individual rights of children need to be protected. We need to step up efforts in both. This was wrapped up well in our debate on good governance being a cornerstone of integrity in sport. And tomorrow we will continue with the youth sector. We will invite the ministers to adopt two conclusions, firstly on digital youth work and secondly on education and training of youth workers. Investing in our youth is investing in our future. Therefore, we need to increase the quality of youth work, including the level of education and training of youth workers. The youth worker education and training should address issues relevant to young people, for example, digitalization. We need to enhance the digital skills of both young people and youth workers. We will also have an interesting debate on the possibilities of youth work concerning modern day challenges such as climate change. This September we had 6 to 8 million young people in 150 countries protesting against climate change. Everybody knows young Greta Thunberg doing a great job raising awareness. We are witnessing a big movement by young people. The question is how to get everybody on board for active citizenship supporting our democratic model. We want the voice of the youth to be heard. Otherwise, we have a risk of young people losing their confidence in decision making. This, I believe, we cannot afford. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Commissioner Navracic, please go ahead. You have the floor. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We had a very good debate with cultural ministers this morning on the innovation potential of Europe's cultural, creative, and audiovisual sectors and how we can ensure they stay competitive on the world stage. These industries are vital to boost economic growth, job creation, and social development. That is why the European Commission remains determined to stepping up EU support to them, including through a reinforced Creative Europe program after 2020. I would also like to welcome the resolution that the Council adopted today on the cultural dimension of sustainable development. Integrating culture into the EU's implementation strategy for the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is very important. Culture has a part to play in working towards all sustainable development goals, and it is only right that this is recognized and given more visibility. Turning to sport, we had an excellent debate on promoting good governance. Restoring the integrity of sport has been a priority for me, and I'm confident that the incoming Commission will be equally committed to reaching this goal. Sport is hugely important for society, but its power is based on trust, people's trust. This means that good governance principles need to become part of the structures and daily operations of all sport organizations. We've been working to support this through the sports strand of Erasmus+, Plus, helping to implement and improve good, gov good governance in sport across the EU. Closely linked to this issue is the fight against corruption, on which the Council also adopted conclusions today. This is another area where the Commission is committed to developing effective tools that can help to protect sport. I also welcome the adoption of conclusions on safeguarding children in sport, a very complex issue that needs to be tackled in a comprehensive manner. 
I would like to thank the Finnish Presidency for having brought this sensitive topic to the attention of the Council. And finally, I'm looking forward to celebrating the third edition of the Be Inclusive EU Sport Awards tonight, together with Minister Kostonen handing out awards for nine outstanding projects. This initiative, which I launched in 2017, highlights and rewards people and organizations using the power of sport to bring people together and build communities. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, so the floor is now open for questions. Please kindly mention your name and the media you represent. Diego, go ahead. Thank you. Um, Diego Velasquez from the Luxembourg Award from Luxembourg, unsurprisingly. Um, I have a question for the... Pr I have two questions, actually, but if it's okay, I first asked, ask my first one and then wait for the response and come back to the second one. Um, the first question is... Um, there was a debate today also on the name of a commission portfolio, namely the one for Maria Gabriel, where some ministers um, wanted to have the word culture actually included in the portfolio name. Can you give us some insight into how this debate went and if there was support for this idea and what you will do with the outcome of the debate? Thank you. Commissioner, would you like to? I think it, it wouldn't be fair. <laughs> I'm an outgoing <laughs> commissioner, so I can't comment on on this debate and on the the name of the of the portfolio, the future portfolio. So I would I would give it back. <laughs> to the Minister, do you so. have anything anything to comment on this? Well, um, as you can imagine, there could be some uh, needs for name culture. <laughs> to to commissioner, but uh, we had a debate about that. But uh, uh, it's in commission's hands the name, what what it will be. So so um, culture and creative in industries are really important part of European uh, economy and uh, European culture and society, and that's why um, we had this debate. Thank you. Go ahead. You can ask your other question. <laughs> yeah, it's on the same topic. It's a follow-up. Thank you again. I, I have to push you on this because um, as a presidency, you allowed this debate, and it's a bit weird, though, to debate on something that is actually not the prerogative of the council, no? Yes, but uh, it's, it's totally uh, okay to debate on everything, so we had this on our our agenda too. Yeah. Yeah, it, it wasn't any other business initiated by by the Italian government. So I think it's just a benevolence of of the of the Finnish government to to give opportunity to the Italian delegation to give their reasoning of this point. Mm. Thank you, Diego. Are there any other questions? I see none. Okay, so the press conference is finished. Thank you so much for coming and see you all soon. Thank you. Thank you. I see you in the evening, yes. very soon. Yes. <laughs>